global artist of the year. That's I don't even crazy. know what that means. Did they make that up for her? <laughs> I don't know. That's crazy. I don't know who it was previously until now. Well, what does that mean? It means the world loves Taylor Swift. And yeah. that's a great thing. Cheers. Cheers. I love you. I love you too. I have <sighs> Witch's Brew. Which one do you have? Cherry Slush. Cherry Slush. Yeah. This is, I think, the last Witch's Brew. It's the last one. It's the last one. I actually liked it this time around. Yeah, it's. I love that it's seasonal. I yeah, love that it's seasonal. It's not my favorite, no. but it's definitely. It's a cold weather energy drink. For sure. It's a slow sipper. But they're so darn good. Man. I'm really digging Cherry Slush right now. I mean, I'm a cosmic stardust girl all the way, all day. And Berry Pop. Berry Pop. They have to bring Berry Pop back. That was the pink one? That was the one with the lips on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like cream strawberry or something. So, Alani, thanks for keeping us fueled and energized. And bring back Berry Pop. See, I'm going to hit this microphone so much. Please don't. I'm just, I'm saying it out loud so that I remembered to not, but I want to talk with my hands. <sighs> I don't know why. I know why. Would you like to enlighten me? No. Nope. Okay. Welcome back to Adventurous Spirit. Hey, welcome back, guys. How you doing, babe? Doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm feeling good. Feel good? Yeah. Got your friendship bracelets on. Got my friendship bracelets on. Do you have yeah, yours? I, I do have mine. This was fun. And each of the boys have one too. Yeah. What does yours say? I don't want to tell you. Tell me. What does yours say? What does your friendship bracelet say? It says Mary Swift, miss. All right. It does. I love it. And the A is actually upside down. But it makes it look cooler. But it really does look like a 12 year old girl made it. But And then there's something else on there too, isn't there? Yeah. There's a little C in. Yeah. What does that stand for? It's for Chris and Noel. Because it's our friendship bracelet. I have two. One of mine just says love and the other one says, drum roll please, adventurous spirit. Hey, <laughs> that's on brand. Yeah. Cool. I feel like we look very cool. Well, so many people online have like said, I'll get you a friendship bracelet now. So yeah. I feel like wearing one, it's like I'm part of the team, you know? Yeah. I feel like I'm one of them. A Swifty? Is that, mm-hmm. is that what you're referring to? This is like getting branded as a Swifty, right? Right. Yeah. It's like piercing your ear in the 90s. Yes. To mean certain things. Yes. That's exactly what friendship bracelets are it's to like Swifties. You, you wear this out, <laughs> you wear this out so people know. You know, this is a this is a sign. Right. This is a choice. This is a choice. I'm aware what this looks like. Exactly. I'm aware that I'm bringing a little bit of attention to myself and I'm loving it. So what's up? Well, I mean, we got to go to the Natural History Museum with the boys the other day. I love a good natural history museum. Dude, they have been some of our best experiences, again, on the road. And I think also one of our best options for alternative education for our kids as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, we figured that out really early on before before full-time traveling, before unschooling and all that stuff. Before all of it. We took them to a museum one day. In Salt Lake City. Yes. Badass museum, by the way. I think our favorite. And the way the kids like lit up. Yeah. And they were kind of reluctant to go like, oh, there's. What there's, kind of museum is no it rides. anyway? Yeah. Like, you, do you need like Wi-Fi for it? It's like, no, you just show up. And they're like, ugh. But they had the best time. Casey bought a hat with his own money that like. He did. It says like it's, Natural it says, History Museum of Salt Lake City, Utah. And he just like wore like, that hat merch? so proudly. Got to get something here. Still in every city we went to for two years was like, is there a museum here? Mm-hmm. Can we go to a museum? Yeah. It's like, sorry, there's not. Yeah. Museums here aren't really as what you're imagining from that last one. But like, yeah, he, he never let that go until we got here. And he's like, let's go to the museum. We got to go see a show at the planetarium. They have a planetarium. We learned about the night sky in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So we know exactly what we're looking up at. Yeah, Albuquerque. Albuquerque, New Mexico. That's where we ended up. Yeah, for our second time. And kind of almost by choice. Of all the places, at least in the country, that I thought we would like get off the road for and like purposely like sit down, it, it Albuquerque's not on that list. Yeah. In Albuquerque. 
I love that song in high school. But yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's, I feel like a little hidden gem. I mean, it's been great for winter. We've chosen this place for our winter seasons. Now this is our second year in a row that we've been like, yeah, let's do New Mexico again for winter time. Cause we have, I think really fallen in love with a lot of New Mexico and we got to go visit Roswell last yeah. year. That was a bucket list item for me. Yeah, you've talked about it ever since we met. And it's right there. And it's right there. Just a few hours drive outside of Albuquerque. So again, a nice place to be here because Roswell is great to go visit, but there's really, you don't want to be staying in Roswell for longer periods of time because there's way less to do than there is here in the city. Like again, Albuquerque really offers that big city There's a lot to do, but you don't feel like you're squashed in like the cities where everyone's like on top of each other. I think that's what I like the most about it. It's, it's a big area and it has, like you said, everything you need. Mm -hmm. Where else? We've also, well, oh, I was also going to say that, I mean, not only then do you get all the things that the city provides, but then you can also be really outdoorsy here. There's a lot of, I mean, there is a lot of history here, which is why the museum again was so cool because they found actual dinosaur bones here, like in Albuquerque, there's petroglyphs, right? We walk from our doorstep and you and I get to go look at petroglyphs. Yeah. Like, like how many, like a thousand years ago or something. Yeah. I think it. there's hundreds of thousands of them. mm -hmm. You can just walk on the little trail and it takes us a mile and a half walk to get there. And then we're at this like gorgeous rock formation. We get a perfect view of the Sandia mountains. We're going to, I haven't booked it yet, but we're going to go on a little snowboarding vacation here because New Mexico also has a lot of options for skiing and snowboarding within reasonable driving distance. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah, we haven't, oh, I'm so we haven't excited. in a while. Two seasons. We've been carrying around our gear for, for two, two years seasons. in the RV, mm-hmm. thinking like, as soon as we get a chance, we're going to. We did it the first year on the road. Our very first year, we entered RV travel in winter. So our very first season, we snowboarded. And then, yeah, the last two seasons, the last two winters, we haven't. So I'm ready to get back on the mountain. I mean, and it's something that both of our kids enjoy, too. I think when we first started snowboarding, we were living in South Lake Tahoe and we went snowboarding there for the first time. Cade was only two years old. Casey was nine. And it was one of the very first things. Yeah, I had snowboarded like a few, a handful of times when I was like 18, like fresh out of high school, but then it had been over a decade. But then that was like the first thing we had done as a family of four because again Cade was only two so up until this point he's just been a baby in the family so this was like the first thing that all four of us could do together and all equally had the same amount of excitement around I don't think any of us even successfully like rode down the little practice hill no not the first time like no success but that's also what makes it so rewarding is that it's it's just enough of a challenge and, and you know that the the payoff, the reward is oh, yeah. worth. The payoff of going down a hill, even just like a small hill, just like once you're, you're not like scared of falling where you're just like riding. You find that you've... balance. It really allows me at least to like meditate too. I think it's yeah. like bringing me to the present moment, bringing me to my breath, bringing me to my body. And yet I'm able to just kind of like experience. Yeah. I think when you think of snowboarding, you think of it being like a fast paced, like, no, like extreme mountain dew, you know, like, but, uh, yeah, that's true. But really a lot of it's like, you have to wait in line. So you have to like sit still, you get on the lift and the bigger the mountain, the longer the 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 journey is to get there. It's quiet. Especially like the more like snow that they've had. uh, You're taking in these views and you get off and you kind of like pick a spot and you like do your bindings up. And then it's like you get, you kind of have to force yourself to get ready in the moment. You usually have earbuds in and you're finding, you're finding the song and the vibe that you want for the day. And then it's like, yeah, just let's just go. And then you're just. And then you just like vibe down the mountain, literally. Yeah, we need to go soon because I want to make sure that that remains Mm. part of the entire family's like idea of fun. Yeah. 
the family sport that we've we've done their entire childhood. They're going to grow up being like, yeah, I snowboarded with my family yeah. most winter seasons. You can learn when you're a kid. That's the way to do it. I know. I mean, <laughs> they picked it up so over. easy. They picked it up so easy. Yeah, like way easier than we did. That was the thing. It's like, I can't really teach you how to do this because I'm learning myself. So right. as I learned, he's like, Casey was like, oh, how do you do that? And I'm like, I don't know. Figure just, it out. <laughs> like just lean over. I'm just trying not to fall. Honestly. That's but then he was I the one about. like giving us pointers. Like later on, he was like, try it like this. Yeah, he's or like, like I, I got, do it like this. I'm going off the jumps now. And I'm like, what? How are you? <laughs> I know. You air, dude? I know. I remember being like a few times when we first started going, like, where's Casey? And then it's like, oh, he's back on the lift already. And then he's waving by to himself. us. We're all sitting by there himself. tired. You know, Cade's like playing in the snow and you can just watch Casey going up the lift, coming down, going up the lift. Yep. Got his it's little like, blue Casey, helmet we gotta, on. We found we gotta him. got to go home, man. He's like, oh, just one more time. Two more times. That's it. I love that. Yeah. I love that too. For so. sure. Yeah, it's special. Snowboarding is special. So to the our fact family. that we can do that while being in tempered, what do they call it? Temperament? What's the word? Mm. The weather when the weather is tempered? I don't This is a temper Tempered tempered environment. Tempered. Tempered weather. I don't know. There's a word there. Mild winters. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's nice that we get to drive there to experience the snow and then we get to come back to sun, fifties during the day, twenties yeah. to thirties at night. It's a perfect little winter. Gorgeous sunrises, gorgeous sunsets, a great, beautiful night sky. I think we're right now we're out on the outskirts of Albuquerque. So like the light pollution when the the moon isn't full is like we get a great view of the stars too. Here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of the stars, because I know we mentioned again that we went to the Natural History Museum and we got to go to the planetarium. Right. And we got to have a show about the night sky that we look up and view here. And there was something really interesting that I didn't know about our North Star, which is also called Polaris. It showed that like all the other stars when like the Earth is in its like rotation also move their point except for Polaris, which is why we use that as our North Star. Yeah. I, so why? I why? My aunt, my question is, why is that? I missed that part. Didn't Well, it's because it's not that the star, it's not like the other ones are moving. It's just the way that the star is positioned in relation to um, how our earth is spinning. Pretty constant. Mm -hmm. Like it's rotating, yes, and it's not, it's kind of off axis, yes, but it's basically like a spinning ball. Where that star sits, it's like, it's at the, the right point from where we're spinning to where it always seems like it's in the same spot. Interesting. So, so we, it just as our moon, we have a special relationship with this star. Like we're just perfectly in alignment right. with this star, which is why we get to call Polaris so our North. Most stars star. have like circular motion that they do, even if it's small, but right. Polaris almost has like zero. It's like, it's fixed in the sky. That was just, I didn't, I had, I did not know that. I didn't know that that's how I learned it that as a 35-year-old woman at the Natural History History Museum the other day with my two children. I thought it was because it was the brightest star. Oh, I feel like I maybe that, thought I knew, that I knew at that one it had, point. I knew that it had something to do with, you know, north. Like you can find north if you can find the north, north star. star. Right. But I didn't, I never, I guess I never asked the question, why is it always north if we're spinning in space? But that's why. The more you know. Okay. It's crazy. Just go to a museum. Just go to a museum. Just like how we only know what like 20% of our oceans. That's such Less a crazy, that, I think. that's such a crazy thought for me like to think 5%. about. Like, isn't that crazy? We it's are just, crazy. we're still just like tiny little human scientists still trying to just figure out where it is that we like live in the universe. Yeah. We find, we find new species like on a daily basis. Yeah. All the time. People We're in, always learning. People in those deep submarines now are just like, hey, what was that that just flew by? Oh, I don't know. Like new species new. discovered. Yeah. Let's yeah. clearly let's we don't find know what out. that is. Nothing super surprising yet, but never know. You never At this know. Point, we don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's all just very interesting. I feel like I've always been just a natural born scientist. I'm just I'm Not constantly curious and also a natural born philosopher. I like to philosophize. Is that a word? Philosophize. Philosophize. I like to philosophize a lot of things. I feel like I need a monocle on right now. 
I don't think that's the right word. <laughs> well, I want to use it. I made it up. Philosophy. Philosophical. Well, philosophy. City of philosophical. I'm being philo- philosophical, but like if I want to take something and philosophize, philosophize it. Philosophize it. Damn it. I want to take it and philosophize it. Like, hmm, everything's philosophizable. Well, that, all right, that's too much. <laughs> philosophizable. Philosophizable. Everything's philosophizable. I don't like that. I love it. I'll give you philosophize. I'll take it. We're doing a good job. Yeah, I think so. We're, we're raising learning. good kids. They're learning things. Yeah. We're giving that to them in our adventures, in our travels. Experience. Experience. It's the greatest teacher. It's the one thing you can't about. Mm, I love that. Is that a saying? I don't know. Experience, it's like the one thing you can't can't read about. Everything else is a story, but if you experience something... That's different. Yeah. Because then it becomes yours. So I have a question for you. So what would you say it is about you personally that allows you to adapt to these like big life decisions when it comes to like not giving up on your dreams and your visions and your endeavors? What allows you to be so like adaptable and courageous to like not give up? I don't know. Stupidity. (laughs) (laughs) If there is one thing you are not stupid. Wait, what? Did I say that right? That's what most things feel like for me. I just feel like this, I feel dumb doing this thing. So it's like, I want to feel less dumb when I do it. Like our, our goal is to do what we're doing right now and we're learning all the inner workings of all this. I feel so stupid when it comes to like, yeah, how do you do this? How do you light a room? How do you, how do microphones work? <laughs> how do I, how the hell do I get the camera to look nice? You know? Yeah. Where do all these and wires I've, go? I've stumbled every step of the way. <clears throat> Eventually I've gathered up enough things to where I, I do kind of understand what I'm doing. There's a huge gap between where I am now and where I would have stopped oh, if, sure. if I was afraid of being stupid, you know? Yeah, it is comes down to like fear, I think, for a lot of people to be seen in incompetence, right? Yeah, nobody likes to feel incompetent. It's like being the kid in the classroom that gets, you know, pointed out for not keeping up or whatever. And it's like yeah. nobody wants that kind of attention. Of like, and I'm like the I perfect, don't know what I'm doing. I am the perfect candidate to be that person because I'm super shy. I'm not very outspoken and I'm very anxietal. So it's like, yeah. if I feel uncomfortable, I feel uncomfortable in like seven different ways. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm self-conscious and I'm just nervous. And I, if I don't absolutely know every inch of what I'm talking about, I tend to get embarrassed. I'm you know, it sets in. Yeah. But you just have to remember that nobody really knows a hundred percent of anything. Right. That's the beauty of social media and YouTube and doing a podcast. Like I just want to hear real people talk their real feelings about real subjects. Mm, Those are my favorite. Mine too. That's all I want to know. I don't want to hear the inner workings of other people's minds. I don't want to hear someone sound like they're reading from the manual. Mm-hmm. You know, like during a news interview or something like I just want to hear people, their honest opinion, a different real perspective, time, a hot take. I like hot takes. hot takes. Yeah. I have another question for you. Follow up. Have you ever felt those ways around me and in my presence? What ways? Shy, unspoken and anxietal. No. Because I don't, I've never, I've seen you experience those things with other people, but I've never witnessed it within our relationship. That's, that's how I knew you were the one Mm -hmm. from our first date. Well, can I tell one of my like favorite stories of our like beginning, beginning times, which you've heard probably a million times, but I don't know if it was on our first date or not, but it was like early on in one of our first dates, you said something about like how you're really awkward which I think was your way of trying to tell me that you are shy, unspoken, and anxietal. Yeah, if I don't, and, make, if I don't make sense all the time, I'm sorry. But just, I remember you just saying like, yeah, I'm really awkward. Like, And I remember you using the phrase like, just wait. Like, just wait or something like that. And I kind of was yeah. like, okay. If you don't think so now, just I wasn't. Yeah, I, 
wasn't sure how to like take that, but it was like in the back of my head, you know, for a while, at least within those first several months of us like being together. And I just kept thinking with every further interaction of like falling in love with you even more. I'm like, I don't understand why he tried to give me this warning about being this like super awkward guy. And then it was like, I brought it up. I think we were just talking on the phone. So this shows you again, how like early on this all happened, but I think we were talking on the phone and I brought it up and I was like, Hey, do you remember like at one of our first dates, you said that you were like really awkward or something. And I just said like, I, I have no idea what it is that you're talking about. And then your response was, you like laughed, I think. And then you were like, Noel, it's because like, you're just as awkward as I am. Yeah. You're even worse than me. <laughs> I was like, what? that's why it works. Gasp. I'm not awkward. But then that's the thing is that I'm delusional about being awkward or I have no, I don't experience anxiety about looking stupid, but I'm also very self-aware, which I think also just gives me the confidence to be like, I'm very much like, this is what I look like. This is what I sound like. This is what I feel like. And this is my thought on something. And so if you are going to take it in whatever way you're going to take it, I just feel like that's on you. And it's just like, this is me and this is what I have to say. And I've always just kind of been like, take it or leave it. Yeah. The the bubble that you operate in is not a negative one. It's just, no. it's, you have like your own like rules. Yeah. Your own atmosphere. Just no like rules. Certain things that just bounce off the atmosphere. You're just like, uh, whatever. Like mm-hmm. this is who I am. This is what I care about. Very and much. This is how I feel about it. And from the moment we like touched hands, it was these two hands, which is our our tattooed arms, our sleeves, and our friendship bracelet and our arms. Friendship bracelet. This is all coming together. Wow! Thanks, Taylor. Soulmate energy. <laughs> More soulmate energy. Speaking of Taylor, she moved in. They are bunking right now. <laughs> Bunkin' babe? We are bunkin' over. Bunkin' babes? They're just gonna be doing, I loved, we saw this one TikTok of this girl describing what they're like most likely doing, where Taylor Swift is just like at his house in her sweats while he's at work. And yeah, I just feel like there are normal people with a lot of money and a lot of resources. So if you and I were had as much money yeah. as Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift, what would we, what would we be doing? Yeah. In reality, regardless of the house that we're in, if we were, both, what are we doing? If babe? we were both away on work for a few weeks yeah. and now there's some, some, some vacay time and you can't just go on vacation. So there's the staycation. The staycation. If we had a staycation, it would look exactly like what I'm hoping is, you know, just a lot of pajamas. Jammies only. Door dash. Door dash. And like a Hallmark movie marathon. Yeah. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. We're watching all of them and all the Harry Potters. And we're just staying up all night. Yeah. And loving each other. I, I imagine. Taking I, a lot of showers. Sure. So we should maybe wrap up this episode with a word from our sponsor. Oh, wait. I think I would like to go spend some time with our family and enjoy the rest of today because I love you and I love spending time with you and our kids. And I've had a lot of fun sitting down and talking with you today. Me too. And I'm really grateful for everybody who sat down and spent the time with us today too. So thank you guys again for being here, coming along another full-time family adventure on the Adventure Spirit Podcast. Cue the outro. Bye.